All right, so the first FRQ on the ENM exam is the mathematical routines, and it is pretty a standard uh, math question. It's probably the most similar to any of the past um, uh, ENM FRQs and other of the examples. It's pretty much just normal derivation, sim a lot of times symbolically. So let's take a look at this one here. So we have a thin non-conducting ring is held fixed in the XY plane with its center at the origin O. The ring has a radius R and a positive charge uniformly distributed around the circumference. A small sphere of mass M and a negative charge negative Q is on the Z axis as shown. Point A is located uh, above the Z axis. In which of the following regions, if any, can the sphere be placed on the Z axis? So the net electric potential at point A due to the sphere and the ring is zero. Okay, so this uh, uh, indicate your answer by selecting one of the options. Now, potential for a point charge is KQ over R. This is for a point charge, right? And potential can be positive or negative. It's a scalar quantity. So we're talking about like this guy right here. If you chop it up into little pieces, they contribute, each of those contribute a, a positive potential to any point on here because it's positive Q, okay? So... Um, we want to know where the potential is going to be, if it's going to be at point A or below point A. Well, if you think about all of this charge Q, all of these charges located are located at a distance, not R, but R plus, well, uh, sorry, this is R, the distance from there to there, the KQ over the little R here, that distance from that charge to there is going to be R root 2, right? Because this, is, this distance is R, that's the radius, and then this height is R also. Whereas the distance from here to here is, um, let's see, negative Q in the Z axis. Uh, does it say where it is? Oh, okay. Well, is it, I don't know what that distance is. Is that distance? Um, oh, this is look at Z is equal to R. Point A is Z equals R. And then where is this charge located? Uh, the negative charge on the Z axis is shown. Um, I think it's hard to tell what it is, but ultimately, like this distance is R. If you assume this distance is R, it's like halfway. Ultimately, this this guy's going to contribute a larger potential because all of this charge is located R away, whereas all of the positive charge is located R root two away. So it's going to be um, so they're not going to add to zero because this is going to there's a negative potential from this guy and a positive potential from this guy, but they're not going to add to zero halfway in between. So you got to be because of the distance greater, you need to be a little bit lower down here. You got to be somewhere down here to where the potential is going to be the negative potential will offset the positive potential. So it'll be below point A only. Now, could you be up here? Well, because this is a greater charge and it's closer. This is always going to be a larger potential than this one over here. Okay, so uh, below point A only is going to be the um, the answer for that one. Actually, sorry, I take that back. It can't be anywhere over here, but it certainly can't. There, it could. There could be a point down here where we're closer to Q, positive Q, but for, I mean, like um, in terms of the distance here, right? So we're further away from the negative Q. And then where, but where where the, where the distance from here and the distance here could could match eventually, I think that distance and that distance could be equal. Is there a spot that that could be true? Um, I think so because of this distance here. This part here could be the extra distance. So I think I think actually it could be above either above or below point A. Um, the first one is going to be located like right down here. Okay. Like we talked about that first one. The other one I think is going to be located somewhere over here where the distance from here to here are going to match. If that makes sense. Not match. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, match. Because um, because they're the same charge. So if we want the positive potential and the negative potential to cancel, there's a pot bo plot below there. And so the only point is to just say, like, well, there's a um, to have a net zero... their uh, zero potential, it needs to be the same average, dif the same distance from the edges of, of the ring and the negative Q charge. And that can occur, that can occur above or below, below point A.
Okay. Uh, the spheres released from rest on the Z-axis some distance above the ring. All forces other than the electric force on, exerted by the ring are negligible. The sphere passes to the origin, whereas the speed V0 continues moving along, eventually passing through a location at negative 3R. Derive an expression for the speed of the sphere at the instant the sphere passes through the position negative 3R. Okay, so what we have here in this scenario, and because we're talking about potential and things like that, we're going to be trying to find the potential and talking about we're talking about speed, things like that. We're talking about kinetic energy and electric potential, right? So we have a velocity V0, and then at some here, negative 3R, right? It's moving, and we would like to know how fast it is, uh, how fast it's moving down here, right? How fast is it going at this location? Well, we can look at the change in the potential, remember? So the work is Q times the change in potential, and that's gonna be the change in the energy of the uh of the, the the sphere right and that's going to be um one half mvf squared minus one half mv zero squared the change in the kinetic energy right and so um i think there's a negative sign here negative change in terms of the internal energy it's like we're saying the negative q times the change in potential is going to give you that change let me think about that if the potential goes higher then it should be slower so if we go to a higher potential final minus initial is positive, then we should lose energy, okay? So it should be negative Q delta V. So we wanna think about what the potential is here and then what the potential is here, and then we're gonna do, that's the change in potential. So what is the potential at this point? Is just KQ over R, because all the charge, if you look at all the charges, all the charges are literally located a distance R away. So when you just integrate that up, um, it's just gonna be KQ over R there. Whereas down here, when this is a 3R distance, all the charges are not 3R away. They are, this is R, this is 3R. The distance to those charges from the charge at that point is the square root of R squared plus 3R squared, which is not, uh, R root 10, right? That's the distance from there to there. Okay, and all the charges, because it's centrally located, all the charges, you chop it up into little pieces, all the charges are located there. So the potential there is going to be KQ over R root 10. Okay, oh, we need to add in the potential of the negative Q minus KQ or plus K negative Q divided by the distance from there to there, which is 2R. Um, I think so. Oh, actually, sorry. That sphere is released down here, so never mind. Okay, KQ over R. So then we're just going to do negative, and then this charge is a negative Q, by the way, so we're going to put negative Q, and then the change in potential is the final potential, KQ over R root 10 minus KQ over R. That's the change in potential, and that's going to be 1 half M vf squared minus one half mv zero squared and that is the change in kinetic energy it's kinetic energy there is one half mv zero squared and so um let's see let's make this positive let's factor it a kq squared over r and this is going to be one over root 10 minus one is equal to one half mvf squared minus one half mv zero squared so we're going to move that to the other side Okay, so 1 half m v0 squared plus this thing, kq squared over r, 1 over root 10 minus 1. Okay, is 1 half mv squared. So then we're going to multiply by 2 divided by m. And so that's going to give you, that's going to cancel with that there. It's going to be v0 squared. Um, v0 squared plus 2 kq squared over m r times 1 over root 10 minus one, and then square root of that, that will give us our final velocity there, like that. Okay, and so that works for that one. Then the spheres were moved. Figure two shows the ring and point C, which is located at Z equals two R and Z. Derive an expression for the magnitude of the electric field due to the ring at point C. Express your answer. So the electric field is a little trickier because not a scalar, we gotta think about the vector. So we think about a point charge by, by splitting this up into a little charge, right? We know the electric potential due to a point charge is gonna be K times that point charge divided by the distance squared. So this thing's gonna cause an electric field pointing this way, component of the electric field this way, which is K DQ 
And then the distance from there to there, well, this is 2r, but we need to do this hypotenuse distance, right? So this is r, this is 2r. So that distance is square root of 5r squared, or r root 5. So this is um, 5r squared there. Now, here's the thing about the that, that electric field. We can't, because it's a vector, we can't just add it up as it is. We have to add up in components, the x and y components. So we're going to decompose this into, let's call this theta. This would be de cosine theta, and this would be de sine theta. Now, hopefully you see, if we go around the entire circle and add up all the components, all the horizontal components are going to cancel, and the only one we care about is the vertical component. Like The end result is the electric field is going to be in the vertical direction. So we care about the DE cosine theta. So the contribution we care about, the DE in the Z direction, which is DE cosine theta, is going to be K DQ over 5R squared times cosine of theta. OK? So now we have to think about what is, what is the uh, relationship between the amount of charge that's occurring there and th this theta. So this is, well, actually. So let's think about this. So can we figure out what cosine of theta is? Well, the theta is constant, actually. So cosine of theta, if you think about this right triangle, this is theta. That's theta. Cosine of theta is going to be the adjacent over hypotenuse, which is uh, r root 5. So cosine of theta is 2r over r root 5, which is 2 divided by root 5. OK? So then we have this is k dq over 5r squared times 2 root 5. And then now we just want to integrate over the entire charge. Well, all of these are constants. We're just integrating dq, and that's just the total charge uh, positive q. So that is going to be our derivation for, um, for that one.